What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I've received this clip in the DMs. I've received this clip on Twitter. Um, you guys wanted me to check Adam Cole going off on Pat McAfee. Now, I did some research before I even pulled this video up, and apparently, this is not their first run in. In fact, um, apparently, at one point, uh, Pat McAfee cost Adam Cole a match in NXT to Aleister Black, I believe. I want to say it was in 2018. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Um, but I, I want to say this is probably at work, most likely. If they've done some stuff within NXT, this is definitely a work and there's other clips of them going back and forth but i want to check this out because i like when wrestling sometimes they keep kayfabe true you know what i'm saying they, they keeps kayfabe is live alive as much as possible it's kind of a dead art in wrestling because of the internet and social media but when they do interviews when wrestlers do interviews like this and stay within character and and have like a continual feud with a you know uh, a social media individual like I, I think that's dope so we're gonna check it out um very interested to see how this clip goes i uh, appreciate all the love and support on the channel road to 20k let's get right into this man just talked about fans are a massive part of it they are how has it been in that entire process <clears throat> because i couldn't fathom a rest and I, I skipped ahead you know the introduction uh, i believe he was talking about me and Adam Cole, we haven't seen eye to eye, got him on the show. So I kind of skipped the part, skipped ahead to like when uh, things really start to heat up. It'd be for, for disaster more in the professional wrestling sports entertainment world than no fans to have any reactions. From. It is freaking weird. Man. I could fathom, yeah. It is so weird. Like, like, but it's also not <clears throat> as weird as you would imagine. So, so like, again, you know, the, the bumps and the bruises and the pain from wrestling matches are far worse when there are no people there. Well, I know what you're talking about. Because if you do, rem I have, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. I know about the bumps and the bruises from wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More Boys. than most. Sporting a couple. Hey, Mr. Cole. You know about the bumps. Listen, Mr. Cole, I, everybody knows I have a deep history uh, with the internet. And one night, late night, got a little intoxicated, bought a wrestling ring, put it up in the barn. Rip Rogers came through the barn. Uh, you know, he trained John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, Pat McAfee. For it, five yeah. so, no I, I, I mean this out of uh, complete respect. So totally. When someone says, I mean this out of respect, no dis or they say no disrespect. Best believe some disrespect is on the way. Really not trying to offend you, but just because one night you got drunk yep. and then rolled around go. in your own wrestling ring Here we go. a couple nights, that, that doesn't mean that you understand at all what the bumps and bruises okay, are Okay, like. yeah, that's it. Facts. And I, I give it to Adam Cole. Um, when it comes to wrestling, wrestlers, even though they, you know, they tend to get, you know, laughed at by other, you know, um, I want to say other combat sports or people that watch like ufc or jiu-jitsu fighting and you know just other sports related a lot of times they get laughed at but they don't uh, people fail to realize like these guys they literally go through pain for our entertainment and it's a it's a craft it's not easy to do it's not made for everyone to do so i give respect to wrestlers that you know put their bodies online for our entertainment man Neither here nor there. I'm just hmm. letting you know that I respect the bumps and bruises okay, that you have with no said, fans. But, okay. Because when I'm yeah. just working with, you know, John Cena's coach, it's just me, him, and the bar. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You totally know what you're talking about. Oh, bro. I do. Oh, speaking passive, of knowing what I'm talking the about, there is a lot of buzz about you because you have been <laughs> the king of NXT and longest reigning NXT champion and first ever North American champion. And I do believe, hey, let's show a little respect to the, the hey. first ever. Exactly. First ever double champion in NXT history. A lot of people don't talk about it. I was NXT tag team champion mm -hmm. and NXT North true. American champion in the same night. Ever heard of it? 
That's what we're talking about here. That's Double champ. And you have all of these accolades. Yeah. And there's been a lot of comparisons to you and Mr. WrestleMania. You yeah. and a guy named Shawn true. Michaels, who I think is uh, obviously a mentor of yours down there mm-hmm. at the Performance Center. But I think even you, as a student of the business, would understand that you're nowhere near what Shawn Michaels was. But that has to feel pretty good to be in the same <laughs> breath as a man that you have a lot of respect for. Um, okay. Uh, when someone hits you with the, the laugh as they're thinking... Best believe some intenseness is on the way. All things considered with what you just said, uh, first of all, Shawn Michaels himself has said there's a lot of comparisons uh, between the two of us, which to me is a huge compliment. Mm -hmm. And let me finish. I feel like you're going to cut me off. Well, he's a nice Uh, guy. So he is a nice guy. (laughs) He's also one of the... Pat McAfee, he's being an ass too. He's basically saying, well, he only said that because he's nice, so... Yo, this is this this is a good work. Greatest, in my opinion, the greatest wrestler of all time. So I, by old. any means, I I have never ever once said that I am as good as Shawn Michaels mm-hmm. ever. I know I have years and years to go before I get to that point. I think Shawn recognizes that I'm on my way to maybe someday having a career like his. But he'll tell you, and I'll tell you, I'm not worried about being the the second coming of Shawn Michaels. I'm going to be the first Adam Cole. Uh, so. I hope WWE don't ruin him. Please. I hope he stays on NXT, but it looks like he may go to the main roster. For the love of God, do not ruin him. He's one of the best things y'all have on television, bro. Oh, again, I really don't know what <laughs> what you're trying to say. but Oh, no, I didn't mean to offend Because you just said it there. Greatest wrestler of all time. But you... you can say you're not trying to offend me, but it is offensive what you're saying. Uh-oh. I didn't mean it. No. I didn't mean it. No, I didn't mean it. <laughs> You know, someone's being offensive when they turn to like, like their co-host or somebody they know in the studio. Was I was I being offensive? I, I wasn't trying to. No, no, not me. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, you know, you 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 have a good time. You've never but, offended a guest before, ever. But let's stay on that vein there because the comparisons <laughs> so to. Good. Uh, Shawn Michaels are obviously a good one. You know, it's obviously you're on your way. He said it, you said it, the people say it. Uh, but he was able to make his name all by himself. And I think this is a pretty big difference with you. You, whenever you got brought into NXT oh, to, boy. you know, be the king that you call. Bro, he, bro, the air quotations. This is all passive aggressive. This is textbook passive aggressiveness. If you guys are not aware of how to be passive aggressive, this is it right here, bro. You say things, you give it a little bit of a tone, you put air quotations. The air quotations is the key to passive aggressiveness because you're saying, oh, well, you say this, but let's put quotations there. Like, uh, are you really that? They surrounded you with people that <clears throat> some people, I don't say this, some people say this, more talent. What are you getting upset about? This, Bro, he said, I don't say this. Some people say this. You're just saying it. You're... <laughs> Repeating something that someone else says and saying, I didn't say this, but they said this to the person that may be uh, taken the wrong way. It's just as bad as the other person saying it. Oh, my God. This is good. This is these are things that are being said. And it's yeah. a valid yeah. question. I am an interviewer. OK, people say you surrounded yourself, which is very smart. And they might have done it for you with people that were also very, very talented, maybe even more talented than you. And then. <laughs> This is, yo, this is, this is how you keep kayfabe alive. And the Undisputed Era kind of got a chance to take I, off. I know, I know that you're just trying to do your job, and that's fine. I, I took some time out of visiting my family to come and do your show, but oh, you're... Be- another passive-aggressive shot, like I could have been with my fam. I'm doing this, doing this show. It's not more important than my fam. Being a total dick right now. <laughs> Me. And I find it so ironic. Me. That of all people to say that I surrounded myself with really great talent and that's the reason I succeeded of all people you uh oh what a punter whoa you being on a team that li- <laughs> whoa <laughs> hey let's not shit on the punters man the punters have an important job too they gotta make sure the ball is placed in the right area so the team on so the defense doesn't have to do you know they have a little bit of a uh, room to work with you know so you don't want a punter that can't really punt the ball well Punting the ball and it lands at the fifty yard line. 
That's not going to do nothing for nobody except put the defense in a bad position. That's not shit on the punters, man. Literally did everything. You just happen to kick a football every now and then, and, and all of a sudden you feel like you're really, really important. Of all people to say that to me, that I surround myself. Oh, Adam Cole's veins popping out his neck. He's getting into his bag, man. He's getting into his bag. With super talented people, and that's the only reason that I was successful. Whoa, You're a whoa, psycho. Whoa. We didn't say Jesus. only uh -oh. reason. We said it's main reason. <laughs> That's good, bro. We didn't say only reason. We said the main reason. <laughs> this is so good. Main, okay, okay. Main reason. That's and, exactly what you're saying. And since you just kind of took a little jab there at my profession. Oh, boy. Have you been taking jabs at me this whole show? No. no. Very passive aggressive once again. Not me. No. No. No way. No. 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 no, no. no. I was... The player of the decade at my position in the NFL, I being a punter. So although I was surrounded by good people, it was just me and a ball. And, and Pat, guess what? I was the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. And guess who did that all by themselves? Oh, that's right, me. Did it all by myself. No, nope, don't believe that. <laughs> We've watched <laughs> the takeovers, Adam. The undisputed. <laughs> it's, this is how you know it's a work, bro. It's like, nope, don't believe that. Mm-mm. We watch the takeovers, bro. The, a lot of your matches kind of in, kind of funny. Madera <laughs> is the main reason why you've succeeded. But by the way, smart. That's good business. Hey, that's business, that's baby. Business. That's very yeah. smart. Yeah. Well, and especially for you because, you know, you're kind of small. <laughs> oh, we're going <laughs> to. This is so fucking good. We go with the size thing now. Oh. Fuck you, Pat. Oh. Oh. Seriously, I'm sick of your shit. I put the whole. Hold on. That's good business. Hey, Hold on. that's business, baby. It turns to yeah. weak. Well, and this especially for you, because, you know, you're kind of small. This is, oh, this we're going to go good. with the size thing now. <clears throat> Fuck you, Pat. Oh. Seriously, I'm sick of your shit. I come the whole way here, take time away from my family to come to do your stupid fucking show. I love you it. Continue to disrespect me. <laughs> Don't touch me. Whoa. Oh, Fuck oh, you, oh, Pat. Oh. Fuck you. No, fuck you. Stupid Get out of here. Shit. You all right? This is great. What the fuck is wrong with that guy? <laughs> wow. This is fucking great. This is so good. I mean, a lot happened here very quickly. Was Damn. I being condescending to him? No. No. <laughs> Complimenting him. I didn't think so either. I thought I was just pointing out the facts. Have we ever been that disrespected oh, in no. our own studio before? No. <laughs> this is no. So, this is so That's why I have. Bro. Bro. It's the. No. 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 We've, this is our studio. No. We've never been dis No. <laughs> this is great. I haven't had on the show, though, by the way. <clears throat> Smart. Because you don't know what this guy. You have no idea what this guy. Fucking the loose cannon. That? I mean, we're having a good conversation. We're <laughs> up and running. And boom, all of a sudden, he's right here. Fuck me. Fuck you. This pushes Ty, who's got colitis. And we even talk about that. And then he storms off. What's he doing now? Breaking shit out in the office? <clears throat> this is great. I mean, Thursday, July 23rd. I have no idea how we get out. Like, what am I going to Am I going to go fight this guy out here? Do you think he's no. just sitting? He's Billy Tubes and him and my dad just hanging out right now? What, <laughs> what are we doing? That's a show. Hey, watch along tonight. Yankees and Nationals. Oh Tony Foch throwing out the opening pitch. What? Oh, my God. That's pretty much it, yo. This is what you call keeping kayfabe alive, bro. This You could tell, like, this whole interview was just a straight work. And, you know, they have previous history. So all you really have to do is do a couple of Google searches. You can see... Okay, these guys have history within NXT. When you have someone costing someone a match, a wrestling match, you can tell nine times out of ten, it's a work. And this was dope. This was entertaining as hell. Um, stuff like this need to happen more, bro. I, I love con continuity and, and keeping wrestling some sort of like keeping some sort of kayfabe alive, like. You know what I'm saying? In a believable sense. When you got Adam Cole, a believable individual that will do it, whatever it takes to win, surrounded himself with the Undisputed Era, created a movement in the NXT, and, you know, one of the best things on NXT. You have this individual come to this show 
and you have another individual point out well technically the undisputed error is the reason why you're you've been champ this long like kind of feed into the storyline like yo that is brilliance at its finest man i enjoy interviews like that i wish wwe put on interviews like this this would make their segments even better like just let the characters be them that's adam cole that's that's the character adam cole right there perfect believable i could see him doing that at an interview he felt slighter or disrespected so and they you know brought some real with realism with it with him training with Shawn michaels so it, it makes sense you know what i'm saying and let's not forget even though Shawn michaels did you know a lot of the stuff himself let's not forget dx also helped Shawn michaels dx was a you know uh, another part of Shawn michaels that kind of helped his career along the way as well so let's not forget that too if we're gonna talk about undisputed air we gotta talk about dx so but this was dope adam cole is one of the greatest to ever do it comment down below if you guys want like kayfabe to still be alive in wrestling if you guys prefer kayfabe to you know be in his peers form or if you guys really don't care for kayfabe and you know you think social media is ruining it to the point where you know what i'm saying it doesn't really matter to you you just you just care for good wrestling me personally i think kayfabe should be kept within wrestling because that's what makes wrestling what it is at its core so if you can keep some kayfabe within the wrestling community i think that's dope when you can blur the lines of is it real or is this fake like what's happening here that's when you have people truly invested when they don't know if it's real or fake even though you can kind of tell this isn't really you know real you know what i'm saying but I, someone on the outside if they saw this interview they would think yo this what the hell just happened here they wouldn't know people that watch the show regularly and you know watch the product they can kind of tell so i i, I think uh kayfabe should you know should be a thing that be kept within the uh just in wrestling period but comment down below i would like your opinions on that appreciate all the love and support wrote to 20k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace